Welcome to the Daily Word. It's Father Barry. It's the Monday after Christmas. It's December 28th in the Christmas octave. Today we'll do the opening collect of the day and a scripture of the day. And then we'll go back to our titles theme that we had done in Advent. And we're going to continue through this first week of Christmas. And today it will be King of the Jews. The title, King of the Jews, with references in Matthew 27 and John 18. Hi, it's Father John Berry and your daily word, your, your study on the titles of the Son and Savior, our Lord. We have some titles here in the Christmas octave. And so we've had the Christmas celebration. We've had the Holy Family celebration yesterday, and that would have been the Feast of St. John. Um, so good St. John, we honor you. But now on the 28th, the church honors what we call the Holy Innocence. And it's the, it's the uh, disturbing story in Bethlehem that happens in the Christmas story. And some people pass this by, but it's a, it's a story that today the church has it on its calendar as part of what happened. Let us pray. O God, whom the holy innocents confessed and proclaimed on this day, not by speaking, but by dying, we pray, grant, that the faith in you which we confess with our lips may also speak through our manner of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Gospel for the day is from Matthew chapter 2. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious he ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the Magi. And this, then, was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing in loud lamentations, Rachel weeping for her children, and she would not be consoled since they were no more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Christmas suddenly closes in Bethlehem, Jesus has been already presented in the temple, and the Magi have come now. We don't know the exact date that they come, but it's, it's at least 40 days after Jesus' birth. Now the Magi come, and... It's announced to uh, King Herod that they are there looking for the star child, the child of prophecy, the newborn king. So that infuriates Herod, and pretending he's not going to do it, he does come and massacres all the boys in Bethlehem and its uh, surroundings, trying to, uh, to do away with this promised one. And that's the Feast of the Holy Innocents. The King of the Jews title comes up today with our with our day in the Christmas story, the sad day. King of the Jews is a lot of the reason why there was the massacre in Bethlehem. And so it says in Matthew 2, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw a star at its rising have come to do him homage. 
So right there, the king of the Jews title is being used. His star, often a star rising, a astronomical sign. We have something like that this year. We have two planets that are aligned together and look like one big bright star. Some people wonder, was that the phenomena uh, so long ago? Some think it's a, uh, it's a term meaning a king is coming, a star is a person. Well, it was a star. But King Herod heard this, and he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. He didn't know. <laughs> and they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And they quote from Micah. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least of the among rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And it goes on to say that he would his renown will go to the ends of the world, and he shall be peace. Well, we know about the flight into Egypt by the Holy Family, as Joseph gets warned in the dream. And so off go the, uh, the Magi. But when Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious. Well, they saw, they saw that he wanted only to kill. They weren't going back to tell him anything. So deceived, they just, uh, they say, oh yeah, we'll come back. Well, not. What happened was, Herod ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the Magi. And this was to fulfill what was said through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. So this is a sad part of the Christmas story. We don't know how many boys are killed. Just the fact that there were in the search for the child. It's a little bit like Moses' story where he was sought out. The Jewish boy is a threat to the Egyptians, but he was spared. He made it through. Jesus makes it through. A new Moses. And like Moses, Jesus' name would get known around the world. But Jesus is more than a new Moses, also a new David, a new Solomon king of the Jews and throughout Jesus life he didn't go around calling himself that uh, others did so I sometimes I said are you the king of the Jews said, what are what are you saying or what are people saying and so the king of the Jews became a, a title of mockery to him and they put her a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to be crucified. Matthew 27. John 18. Pilate entered the headquarters, summoning Jesus, and asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? And Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? See that kind of answer? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? If your own nation and chief priests have handed you over uh, to me, so he seems like he thinks he's the great power of the world under uh, Caesar's name, then he basically says, uh, I have power to crucify you, to punish you. What have you done? And Jesus says, my kingdom is not from this world. So Jesus is saying he's a king. And Pilate asked him, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. You know, kings are titles of the world, right? And Jesus says, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. We know Pilate says, what is truth? Uh, we know that uh, 
the king of the Jews was in all four gospels as as uh, Jesus is at his trial and crucifixion and they're they're mocking him with this title are you the king of the Jews Jesus answers ambiguously you say so in John's gospel uh, you know Jesus is saying my kingdom is not from here so he's talking about himself as a ruler uh, we could say today he's the king of hearts so he's already the king of heaven but he's come to to ransom sinners to slaves and bring us into his own kingdom it's they uh, put the crown of thorns on him the royal robe and uh, they're mocking him and on the inscription Jesus of Nazareth King of the Jews but Jesus uh, he's more than uh, King of the Jews he's King of the universe he's King of everything we have now a Sunday uh, Christ the King Sunday to say well he's our King 